Refugees are based in Washington, D.C.? I'm <coughs> the director of uh, training and support. So what that means is that I do a lot of explaining to end users about how to do things in CIVICRM. And um, what I found is that there's just like a lot of little things that you can do in CIVI that an end user can understand how to do, but that no one has ever told them that the option's there. Because there's all this stuff in the administer menu that just sounds like gibberish and like you've just never been there. So um, this is your CIVICRM homepage if you're in WordPress or Joomla or Drupal. So this is what it looks like just by default. These are demo sites, so they have some dashlets up there. But you know, this is your menu. You install a CRM. You have the different components uh, enabled. And then this is what it looks like. It doesn't have to look like this. There's some other things that you can do to make the site work for you in a way that maybe is more specific to your organization. So the first thing that we'll talk about this is what we're going to talk about today. So has anyone ever done a word replacement in Civil CRM? How has that gone? Most it's, well. yeah. Is great. Really bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's actually the truth. Sometimes it's really bad. But sometimes it makes a huge difference. Um, how to add, um, does anyone know how to add a, a different menu item? A couple people? Okay. Who's, who actually, who's an end user and who's a consultant? End users? Right, mostly end users, awesome. Consultants? You guys already know this, but. <laughs> okay, um, changing your contact display name, uh, your custom uh, field display, and uh, view, how to like, see slightly different things in your viewing contact record, re contact record search results, and then how to just create a dashlet. So word replacements. In this example, I had a client that was going to use uh, Civi Campaign for grants because they are a grant receiving organization, not to be confused with Civi Grant, which is for grant giving organizations. And the reason they did that is that campaigns are a way to have a bunch of activities belong to another entity. But the, the campaign word was like really confusing their staff because every time they went to go add a new grant, they were adding a new campaign. So then just changing campaign to grant made a huge difference. So the way that you would do that is if you go into the administer menu, customize data and screens, there's an option that's called word replacements. And then this is how you'd actually go to add it. So here's the original campaign changed to grant. I also did campaigns and changed that to grants after realizing that that didn't actually change very much and I just did the first one. And then after that, so here it is before. Here's the new campaign. When they go to add the campaign, there's their menu. And then here it is after. So they go to add the grant. It changed you know, campaign status to grant status, grant ca campaign goals to grant goals, and the menu item from campaigns to grants. So there's other ways that people use this, but this is the way that I've used it the most often. So adding new menu items. So in this, it's just maybe there's a report that you use all the time, or maybe you just don't like the way that Civi's organized your different options. So in this situation, there's this member report that your membership manager like wants really easy access to. They don't want to search through all the different reports. So you add to your just main Civi CRM menu members this month. So this has like a little bit more steps than the thing I last showed you, but it still I think is pretty easy. I taught all myself to do this just from the CivisCRM wiki, so it's not super complicated. All you have to do is go to, again, go to administer, customize data and screens, and then the navigation menu. But first you have to know the URL of where you want the menu item to be. So I went and found the report that I wanted to do, the members this month, copied the URL, um, gave the menu item a title, copied it in there, saved it, added it to the right parent item. And this is how you can actually sort of drag stuff around over the course of it too, so that you can get a sort of a better idea. And then it will ask you to reload the page. And then there it is. And you can do, it doesn't ha just have to be the top menu. Like, you know, sometimes people like to have advanced search on its own, or maybe they don't want, um, they would maybe when you want go to create a new membership, instead of having that be under administer and then civi member, you can move that into memberships. It's all about like sort of your own workflow and how things work 
best for you. Yeah? Not with not with menu items, no. It's sort of, we'll do that a little bit because based on permissions. Mm -hmm. It's like if you don't have access to contributions, you wouldn't see that, but unfortunately not with that. If you have Drupal, you have a little bit more flexibility because so you can put stuff in like a block on the side. Um, so that's that's a workaround with permissions, but. But, the, but correct me if I'm wrong, but you can set it by role. You can set an access for the menu item that's different but I think if they could still access, I think they can still get to it. I'm just saying. Yeah, you, you could have it not display. Simplify certain you could menus for certain users. You could take it away. Yeah, because there is a, there is a permission. I just haven't played around with it that much. But it doesn't. If they can, add, they'd still be able to find this report. So some people try to use that to like, so someone can't get to something. But yeah. Okay, so contact display. So this is not as, as, as an exciting of an example, but it still could make a lot of difference for you if maybe you always use someone's middle name. Um, so in this situation, the display name that you see in your contacts um, record is actually based off of tokens that um, are set up when you go to create the contact. And you can change what those tokens are um, so that when you go look at them, I can see that uh, Mrs. May Adams is actually Mrs. May Elizabeth Adams. You can also take away stuff. So maybe you just want to see it's May Adams. You can take out the misses. But by default, it's Mrs. May Adams. So again, we're in the administer menu, customize data and screens. And then um, this really long display preferences page. So you see a lot of options here. We'll, we'll get to the, the rest of them um, next. But all the way down at the bottom, I don't know if we'll be able to zoom in. But I think it'll show you closer in a second. Yeah, it will tell you right here that uh, you can change the display options right there. So the sort name I found in search settings does not work very well in every version. So if you want to see, if you want to be able to sort by someone's first name in search results, it doesn't really work, but um, at least not in whatever I was in, 458. But individual display name format, I was able to change that and it displayed right away. Oops. So now you can see, oh, I skipped something. So the other thing that you can do is you can actually change what tabs show up in someone's um, contact record. So where, it sit, where you see right there where it says um, mailings, that was actually a new tab like a couple versions ago. So not everybody has that. So if you send out mailings and you don't want them to just get like mixed in with activities because that's what happens now, you could check that box have a new uh, tab in your contact record that said mailings, and then all of your mailing activity would be there. And so I unchecked a bunch of options. So you'll see that after, you see that there's not as much. It took away tags and memberships. So this is another way to sort of simplify stuff. Um, but this is for everybody. It's not just for one contact. Is it for one contact type? Or every contact, like organization versus individual? Oops. Um, I think it's for everybody. Because I don't recall there being. Yeah, that's for everybody. That would be a good idea, though, if you don't have certain kinds of contributions and stuff. OK, so custom fields. Um, does anybody know what the difference is between um, a tabbed in custom field and an inline custom field? Someone want, you can go ahead. Yeah, you, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the uh, a tab custom field is going to show up on the, on the top of the contact record. First of all, you can only do it tab, you can only shoot tab or inline for a contact custom field. It okay. It applies to contact custom fields. And whether or not the tab is going to show up on the top on the, in the list of tabs, and the inline is going to show down at the bottom. Uh, yeah. So this will happen a lot. Like one client, there's a bunch of fields that one of their um, that their individuals had to fill out that was based on um, emergency contact information and health information. So it's just easier for them to have all of that in like a really easy place where they could just go click on that right away, see everything that they needed to see. 
Um, but if you did that for every single field, then you'd end up with like an endless amount of, uh, of tabs, which would then become sort of unmanageable. So what you see here is that's an inline field. So that's probably what most of you have. Here's a few different ones. There's constituent information, newsletter, sign up, um, test field set, number two is obviously my demo site. And then um, th that's, a tabular um, that's a tabular set of custom fields. So search. Search has, advanced search has so many different options um, for what you can search on. And it just may be way too much for you to be dealing with. Um, so what I did here is I just unchecked a bunch of options that I did either didn't want someone to be searching on or it just was overwhelming. Because what I find is that if someone's usually searching on like membership records or event participation records, but they still want to be able to use the parts of advanced search, they can't find it because it gets buried in all the different options that they have. So again, administer, customize data and screens. And then in the display preferences, um, similar to that, that contact, um, uh, viewing the contact records, you can change what's checked. So everything's checked right now because this is a demo site. So, you know, here it is before. I unchecked a bunch of things. And then there it is after. I think this is much easier to get through. Obviously, above this is still all, everything that you could search on with a contact. Um, but, you know, so like first name, last name, that sort of thing. But, you know, address, any custom fields that you have that are searchable, your contributions, events, um, relationships, that's there. So if you came to my profile presentation yesterday, you might have already seen me talk about this. But you can change the default um, contact, the default search results profile for contacts. And so all you have to do here is go to customize data and screens, search preferences, and then you can change default search profile. And the reason you do that is if maybe you always want to see current employer with somebody, or maybe you just want to get rid of all of this stuff. It's just too much to look at. So here it is before. This is the standard Civicerum. So I stripped it down in the after. So all they wanted to see is first name and last name. So that's all they're going to see now. I created a search, yeah, so you have to create a profile that you mark as a search, pro, a search view. Okay. And so probably, you've all created a profile, but you mark it as a standalone former directory, mostly. But there's also this other option that's called the search view. And to use the search view, you don't have to change the default. Um, it's actually just an option that's available to you in advanced search. If you just go to, um, I think it's actually called like search view or something like that, or view results as, there's this little tab over there, and you have all your search view options. Um, so that's, that's the way you could do that just on like a one-off instead of just changing it for, for every search result. All right, so finally, I am going to talk about creating um, dashboards. Does everybody know how to create a dashboard? Some people do. A few of you do. Okay, Does, who knows what a dashboard is <laughs> since I didn't get a response? Sure, some uh, right there. Uh, yeah, so it's the page. You yes. So to make things, to, to make it really obvious to you that you can add stuff, Civicerum a few years ago added the Civicerum news where you get all your blog posts. That's actually how I usually read the blog is that I log into a client site and see that there's something new posted. Um, <laughs> so uh, the night, the, my favorite thing about dashboards is that you can have a different one for you as opposed to like your executive director. So what I used to work in fundraising, and for me, like the stuff that I maybe would want to see is like who were the last people that registered for <coughs> our gala, right? But like my executive director wanted to see what's the who's the last person that donated an amount of money that was over five hundred dollars or something like that. So it can all be very personal. So to create a dashlet, all you're actually doing is adding that as an option in your report. So what I did first is I went and created this new report. I wanted to only see um, contributions, no soft credits. I wanted it to be a campaign contribution or donation, and I wanted it to be completed. And then I had it sorted by the received date, because I wanted, it to, wanted to see like, what was the most recent money that had come in. 
And then now you can also limit your dashboard results. If you don't do that, you could end up with this sort of crazy long um, dashlet on there. And then also, if you, you mark it as available for the dashboard. So I saved a copy of the report with the different filters that I put on. And this is all in the report settings. I can show you more in depth. So then you go and you click on your configure your dashboard. And then you get your different options that are available. So I, this, these are all the reports that, I'm, that are available as dashlets. So I could move to the CRM news to the left column. I could get rid of it. I could pull down any of these um, I, into either column. And then here it is after. So here's you know, my most recent donations. I kept to the CRM news. But then I also created a new dashlet for my executive director or my membership director. So here's all of our member information and all activities. So questions. It's supposed to be sort of a discussion if you have stuff you want to ask me. You can. Sure. Can, can I add an admonition on that just so for folks sure. to be aware of? While the <coughs> dashboards are individual for everybody, the reports aren't. Right. So if somebody changes a report that's on your dashboard and you don't know it, Right. That's a yes. That is that's a good reminder for everybody about reports. So if you have a report that you're putting on your dashboard, is a good a good best practice to click to make make it a reserved report so that only people with the permission to administer reserved reports can change it. Yeah. Yeah, because and that's actually a sort of a good PSA in general about reports because um, and it's gotten a a little bit easier, but now that it sort of makes it explicit that this is a report template when you go to go to create something, but every time you make a criteria change to a report, you should also save a copy of that report so you're not overriding whatever the original is because someone else could be relying on that and have no idea that you made a change. Um, and then you know the you could make everything reserved, but you know maybe sometimes people should be able to make some changes. So save a copy. It's important to do that. You'll avoid some fights with your coworkers, like the ones I used to get into. That's it. Yeah.